Hi everyone, I'm joined today by a very near and dear friend of mine. We've been working together on the open source space for a while. His name is Christo Dutui. Is that right, Christo? Yeah, that's that right. right. See, I was the first time I said it, it was like Dutois. I went all French and you were like, well, you know, <laughs> it's not quite like that. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Thank you. So we, we wanted to talk today about the you know a a a you know he, here's the beautiful thing about you know Christo he he will pick up an existing open source project he will dig deeper into it you know and will try to kind of simplify and enhance the engineering experience um Christo a couple of days ago reached out to me and he was like hey man you know i i think there is this you know um big change that we can do to uh, the exception library that's exception with the x you know which can enhance you know instead of people having to write comparisons between an, an outer array a, you know a category array and a localization array you know why don't we just simplify that in the exception in the exception library um so let me let me share the screen here about the open source project so people can just see you know the good work they've been doing there sir and then we'll We'll discuss a little bit about the details around that and future enhancement and future improvement. Okay, so here's here's the project. This is exceptions, right? The the project is built to kind of allow people to have what well, what I call uh, problem details, right? So you have an issue, you want to collect a bunch of issues about a validation, you know, uh, process, right? And you want to collect all that information before you send it off, you know, to the API so it can render as a, a problem detail how things are supposed to work uh, if you want to see you know how what that would look like in the real world you know i think i think i documented some of that in the standard but also let's bring people here and let's just say validations the service operations validations and then there is the structural validations and then i think i think i updated it I don't know, you know, it's a, the standard is getting bigger and bigger, Christo. I don't know, you know, at some point in time, we're going to have to start saying volume one, yeah. <laughs> right? So so there it is. You have a rule and then you pass in the rule, right? And then down here, you basically go and say invalid student exceptions. And this guy is upserting data. This is where exception is. Exception with the X, this is its magic. It basically goes and says, let me allow you to append problems you know to a particular property there was a bad assumption in the source code like if you if you go to source.net source dot 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 net <laughs> and you go into the exception class oh it has a clr implementation i didn't even well of course it does and if you go into data there's a the data piece in here it's an i dictionary as you can see here so this is a source code of this guy and this data this i dictionary is problematic it's problematic in so many different ways i know that they're they meant to make it super abstract so people can go do their own implementation so that's what exception really is but the problem with this guy is that every time you try to append you can't just append to a key you have to go find the key remove the key <laughs> add to the array of the keys and then create the key again which is ridiculous right that was insanity so we thought you know why don't we just create a, a better model that can support that um so what christo did like historically speaking and this is just for everybody who's following the standard out there you know if you if you look at any of our projects let's take the rf web for instance you will see that in our tests we used to do this nonsense. We used to go and say, "This is this is our evolution," and and I'm very proud of it because that's how we are growing and evolving, thanks to people like Christo. You know, he brings that kind of simplification to our world. So we used to actually write this by hand, this whole thing, and this was not inclusive enough. It wasn't doing, you know, all the work that we wanted it to. Um, the problem with that is that, you know, a, the the system. You know, it doesn't compare the types. It's only looking at the messages, and it compares the data. And even this data equal, right, Christopher? You know, I think the data equal also has. You you have something that you're gonna do with the with the data equal, right? Like you have another PR around that one, right? Yeah, we currently only do a left to right comparison, not a right to left comparison. So that that PR will fix that. Okay. And what happened to my video? Why did I freeze? That's weird. 
Give me a second. Look at this. What happened? Hold on. <laughs> My camera just decided, you know what, dude, I'm I'm done with you. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me let me put myself back on. Huh. Can you see me now? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, you know. But anyway, so, um, so what was I saying? So okay, yeah. So so you had this. So what did you do, Christo? Christo, you know what? What was? Let's go back to your change here. Uh, here's exceptions, and here is your pull request. I I actually, you know, like, you know. Christo actually had that had PR ready 11 days ago, but we just kept going back and forth, you know, until we figured out, you know, the way to go. Uh, let me open this in code review mode just to kind of help people kind of see what's going on. Is is the code visible from your side, Christo, by any chance? Uh, I just, just see a black block with show all commands. It's loading on the left pane. There we go. Yeah, it's getting... Coming. Okay, there you are. So this is exception extensions. Open it in file mode and then let's zoom. So how do we zoom on this thing? Zoom. There you go. And then I, I want to make this go away. And I want to make this go away. All right, let's take a look at this block of code. What is this guy doing, Christo? Do you want to explain that one to us? Go ahead. So um, the first thing I compare is uh, I compare if, if 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 the exceptions is both null. Um, our our current um, function doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. um, so we've done the null check there. Um, mm -hmm. Then, if 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 any one of them is 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 um, instantiated, we do the next bit of checks where we go on to the type check if, if check with the same kind of extension. Oh, you're getting the uh, full extension. name. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, and then. <laughs> After that, we basically comparing message which we already did, mm -hmm. um, and then we move on to the inner exception to check the type on that as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then it's again uh, we check the, the inner exception message and then do the normal data equals. Yeah. Um, I I have to say I really 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 appreciate your thoroughness because if you just say get type and get name. You could have two types from two different sources. I didn't even think about that one. See, that's <laughs> that's experience right there. I, I, you know, you could have you could have student service exception from two di completely different assemblies, and that's not what was meant. Oh my God, this is this is something else. All right. So, so there's that part, right? So, you, so you're to even com comparing. By the way, just so you know, you could do. Um, can you do and in here? You could probably do and, just actually type in and. I don't know, maybe, you know, I could be wrong. But anyway, okay, what else do you have in this realm? So just, just for people watching, this is all test driven. So Christo didn't, didn't just go write that stuff. He didn't cowboy it. He actually, you know, wrote, you know, Christo here, we say cowboying things like, just write code, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not test it, just put it out there. And so this is all the tests around this. So so each each one of these is actually examining the null state uh, when when a particular value is null, right? Chris, is that yeah. what it is? Nice. Yeah, so, so do the null comparisons, we check the value comparisons for message and then the data. It looks like we really care so much about exceptions. You know, that's a it's a little <coughs> a little not too common. But okay, let's let's go back to this one. So I wanted to also go with you over the um let's see, the data equals. Right? This is the one that you were talking about, right? Yeah. So function does not fail when data is different. You see that's surprising because it does fail though, you know. Do you have like a we're going to need to do a merge on this one. I don't think it'll be a big deal, but let's just take a look here and see. This is the one that, you know, this is the next one, Christo. That's the one that would that would evolve this. What's more important than data 
I so so okay. It will it will for some odd reason it will return data is equivalent if you're not starting with the actual exception. Yeah. And, like if you start with the actual exception, that problem is not there, and that's a bug. I agree with you hundred yeah. percent. So what's the problem? What was the problem with it? Do you know? So I just compared the dictionary both ways. Um, mm -hmm. So from left to right, and then left uh, right to left, and um, also uh, I added that uh, check on line seventy three. Um, mm -hmm. So if if the data count is different, I immediately can um, go out Just of that. Terminate. We don't need to do the, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a bit of a faster exit mm -hmm. to, to 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 the check. Um, but nice. um, yeah, other than that, it's yeah. So data equals, and then you did for the data entries, and then if, if the key doesn't exist, is false, then return. Is data not same? Compare data. What does this do? Assertion scope. Is that from fluent assertion? This assertion. I think so yeah, that was a uh, previous code that was just reused. Uh, so. it's, it's it's probably me. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't I, I, I think I, I think that comes from fluent assertion. So yeah. Um, the only change was that I added the right to left comparison. See, the only problem I have with this is that yeah, sure, you know, you're returning has failure equal uh, true or false, but this area here, Christo, this is where I actually want it to report what's wrong with the data, right? So when you have to, like, you have your expected and actual exceptions, and the data is like a dictionary of key list pairs, right? So there is a key for the property and then a list of all the issues with, with, within that property. Do you think it would be better if we actually just threw an exception, just went in and said, here's here's an issue that happened i i expected that this would throw that exception but it doesn't for some reason you know yeah, and i don't know I, why is that mm -hmm. um i did look at that mm -hmm. um, i didn't get anything out nicely to to give that summary uh, i know there's a lot of libraries but they're so extensive and i think they give much more detail um to, to do the actual comparison even down to uh, the data types and stuff but i think for for the bug that was locked i just wanted to do left right comparison but yeah um, uh yes it'll make a life a lot easier if we can have that detail as well because uh um doing the unit test if you if, 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 if you currently encounter that error you have to debug yeah there's not nothing um fast to, to say to you uh oh i've just uh made a typo in my um, uh, key or something. My key, yeah. OK, OK then. Um, OK, so the only thing I'd have for this is just try to simplify some of these things. I just don't know. Unfortunately, you can't just write a method that says return false, and it will return it. I know why you have this in here. But you know what we can do, though? We can uh, create local functions within the uh, within the method itself. You know what I mean? Like you yep. could have a method and inside it there's a local function and we could push all of these to the bottom and then go and say, hey, return false if this is the value or something to that effect. Um, that might that might be better. I haven't even tried it, Chris. Let, let, let's try it together. Okay, let me, let me try this real quick together so we can see if this is actually a feasible solution or not. Just give me one second here. Let me, let me try something. I have Neo data opened. So, uh, so let's see here. Let's see. Okay, snail mail. Let's go. It's taking its sweet time, Krista. What are we gonna do about technology? <laughs> technology is taking away <laughs> our time, just waiting. You know, I think like at least there's forty to forty to fifty percent of an engineer time waiting for builds to finish and for, for compilation to run and and hey it got a lot better than before right you know yeah. we we used to wait a lot longer than that you know i remember having i worked at this company where we had to kind of wait for the build and the build would take like three hours so you would just just leave just leave and go somewhere and then come back okay so yeah. here it is so let's see if we can actually do this um 
let's see. So can I actually just go and say public void some function? I don't know why this guy is tripping, honestly. I must have been explaining something yesterday, and I just want to see if this would compile, really. So let's see. So instead of saying if, um, um, I don't know, this is null, return false. I'm just trying to see here if I can make this a little bit better. This guy returns true like this. So let's see here. Maybe we can make this work. Um, I don't know. String name. IDs are too smart now. It's compiling in real time and it's telling you this will never be null. Who are you fooling? <laughs> <laughs> so what if we could just go and say uh, funk or action rather. Um, Verify name is not null. And then it goes and says, um, well, you won't be able to return here, will you? Because, because of the, uh, but can you just return anyway? Let's see. Maybe you can. I don't know. This is a function inside of a function. How fun is that? It's weird times. Weird times. <laughs> Name is null. Return false. Can we actually do that? Nope. It won't let you because it has its own return type. Right. Mm. Damn it. This thing is ugly. <laughs> I was hoping we could. I, because I, I, I run into situations a lot where you can't escape this situation here. Right? The best thing yeah. you could do is to throw an exception. But you don't want to throw an exception. You just want to return a value and yeah. exit early. That's That's a good problem to have and a good problem to solve because... It, it 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 could hurt the readability and the overall look and feel of a function. You know, yeah. I'm a little bit meticulous. I care a lot about these things, but yeah. <clears throat> what do you think? Do you have suggestions? I don't know. It could be. Some function. Yeah, I don't know, Chris. I don't I really don't. Anyway. <clears throat> So, so this second function. So, so there's a couple of things we could we could pair on that third one, you know, kind of research it and see if we can. Maybe we should get rid of fluent assertion altogether from exception. What do you yeah, think about that? Yeah, we can have a look. Can have a look. We moved on to this one so quick, Wesson. We didn't show where we use that uh, same as exception. Oh yeah, that's right. Let's see. So I actually have it. In one of my open source projects, for the project that I'm working on right now for the for the mixed reality team, we just literally just used that yesterday. So let's see here. Um, so you know I'm I'm building I'm building my um, uh, devices management experience out there out in the open. It did raise some eyebrows, but uh, you know I am what I am, you know. So I think it was in. Outer Space Apes is my team. That's what I called them, Outer Space Apes, because why not? Nice. <laughs> and uh, let's see, where was the pull request that I was working on yesterday? You know, here it is. So we literally just used that yesterday. So I said, okay, here's code drop tasks across the board. You know, whatever you are, whatever you do, if you see that instance, you know, go ahead and just immediately replace, you know, the the instance. And I think it's I think it's much cleaner now because if you look at let's see um, uh, so so we're we're pulling a bunch of labs like a bunch of devices from the lab to test our whole lens devices and stuff like that. That's just high level, but this is it. 
right here. So this is how you use it. Basically, you would just go and say, uh, let's see, where's where's the zoom in function? This is how you do it, really. You just go here and say, uh, there it is. Same exception as it's beautiful, Chris. It's really really good because now you just you don't have to worry about and it, and it makes it easy for me as well to just go explain it to people. Yeah, so I think I, like, <clears throat> so I think that function we need to put in exceptions as well. But um, if you go down to that test where where we do the test for that, I think I've done an extra extra where? line. Where is uh, it? Chris? In the in the exception in, library. No, in, in you just showed a test there in in that project. Yeah. Um, oh, you, let, oh, let me show you the, what I'm using it. Oh, that's right, right. Yeah. I, I, I put these in a different file. But if you look at the exceptions, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. So in the test, in the actual test, uh, this is this is how I call it. I say same exception as. Yeah. So what were you so, thinking? Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I, I do it a bit differently there as well because mm. on that step, um, mm. it feels to me we only test the output of the logger. We don't check if if anything else is is wrapping the ex exception maybe after the login bit. So what I've done in my test is on line thirty seven, mm. I put the output of that assertion, that exception in in a variable, mm -hmm. and then right below it I do actual exception, same exception as. Do you uh, have an example? What does that look like? So um, yeah. I could I could try it in one of my projects right now with you if you want. Yeah, yeah. If you if you can bring that up, then it it, it be useful. Um, let me you, let, let me bring it up. Even that project right there. If it's oh, good. I see why you're doing that because you're saying just because you're logging an exception with a certain inner exception, it doesn't mean that that's what you're throwing. Exactly. You know? yeah. Oh, dude, you're so smart. You're so clever. I have to tell you that. You know, this is. <laughs> Damn, Chris, like, like you're basically saying just because you're logging it, it doesn't mean that that's exactly what you're throwing outside of your function. Do you yeah. then have to, do you then have to go and say, let me, let me pull the solution here. Do you then have to go and say, this is my, um, um, let's see, what was I saying? Do you have to say, return the exception that was thrown outside of the function? This and then assertion verify. does it for you, yeah. So, uh -huh. so you, we just we just do the verification bit. So so on that line where you do the await, the output of that await is is the exception being thrown. Hold on, this thing is tripping. One sec. If I can only show you how many things running <laughs> on this screen. <laughs> Let's see. I think I think I broke the whole thing. There you go. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, it's coming up. Okay, let's take a look here. So you're basically saying uh, on your, let's see, on your exceptions retrieval, do you just go and say, give me that uh, lab view dependency exception? Lab view so dependency. That actual, actual exception. Yeah, so that's your actual exception, right? So that's actual, actual lab view dependency exception, and then you go take that guy, and I'm assuming that you're going and saying, "Give me." So, so on line forty, you can just uh, paste that exception, same as uh, exception as, and then it will be the uh, same one as, as in line fifty, uh, expected uh... lab dependency exception. Yeah. So I still think there's scope to move the um, function that we do in the in the login, so we don't have to repeat that in every test. Also, to the exception library. But um, this one, this one just adds that extra benefit for us for testing that the exception thrown is actually what you're expecting to throw. That nothing happened after the login bit in the exception handling. I wonder, do you remember how we were talking about if we could make this should be equivalent to, right? But that that's us hijacking the API of fluent assertions. Yeah. And I really don't know, like, so this is, let me tell you why this is important. I can't go in some places and say actual should be equivalent to expected, regardless of the output. Yeah. 
and that actually th that stuff that you just talked about i think that changes everything because i would i would start changing how my exceptions are and where have you been yeah just give me 10 minutes okay 10 minutes so so um so i would actually change how my tests look like to be something like this Christo. so it would be something like await assert throws and that's my function here because that's actually what we're testing that's your actual return type in here and then i would take that guy out i'm trying to so you're adding more code and i'm, I'm trying to remove more code like you're adding code and i'm removing code yeah no, that's fine <laughs> and i think that's okay right <laughs> so so that would be actual and then you're basically i'm missing something really really small let's see Oh, throws a sink. And now, why is this guy tripping? Uh, this dot, does it just need the function like this? Oh, as task. I wonder if I can just make it without as task. That would make me really happy. But basically, see, now that statement's too complicated. See, so I want to go here and say as task. So that would solve that problem. And and what would make me really happy if I could just go do this? That would be the evolution of our in our, you know. And yeah. I, and I bet you this: this throws a this throws a sink is just being stubborn. I will just go change the source code. Where is a cert coming from? Who owns this? Hold on. Is that not part of the? Is that, is that our boys, the X unit folks? Yeah. I might need to find these guys. Uh, who who owns this? The, the the other thing that we can look at as on is um, changing the equality operator to 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 return the right uh, equality check as well. If, if this you guy, don't... you you mean this guy? Yeah. So if you take out the uh, um, the shoot and be equivalent to, and you can then just do dot equals. Oh, equals works like that. If you take out shoot as well, then it's then you're back to your normal equality operator. But um, we we but, we'll need we'll need to change that code to make it fully work because oh. it, it fails on the dictionary at the moment. So, so what, what we did in the extension now needs to be replicated in a equality overwrite on on the uh, exception class. Oh, that would to oh, oh, but I want to keep the language, Chris. Yeah. But do, if, 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 we, if, if, if we do equals anyway, then it's 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 targeted at, at everything, not just in terms of um, unit testing. So I think that's something that we can do anyway. Um, and then as a, as a second step, we can look at your uh, fluent assertion testing language. Like as a step, right? Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. I think... I think this part here, so let, let's go back to the actual same exception as, I think just, just for people who are watching us to understand, I'll explain what, what Chris is just saying, because we're, the reason why we're cutting some things short is because we're having a lot of discussions on Discord behind the scene, but I don't expect the person watching the video to actually understand, you know, you know, all of the context behind this, what we're, what, what, what Chris is really saying is saying just because you logged the right exception with the right inner exception, that doesn't mean that that's what you actually threw, right? This test is passing here because we're doing the right thing. But check this out. If I go to retrieve lab view and go to um, and go to this guy, <clears throat> what was I testing? The dependency? That, that create and log exception, yeah. You were just saying. Yeah. So... What what he was basically saying is that you could you could just return literally just this guy in here a new lab view dependency exception. So he found he found a gap in our system, right? Because I can literally go here and say, oh, this is any exception in the world. So I did log the right exception, but I didn't actually return and throw the right exception. Right. So if if we don't do that part that Chris was just talking about, let me go control minus 
if I just go here, let me revert all of this just to just show people what let me show people how smart you are. So you're, you're 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 a very clever guy. You want to learn that. So if I do that change, my test deal will still pass. Watch this. I think, Chris, I think it'll still pass. Yeah. Because we don't Yeah, look. Here's the test. Watch, watch, watch. And it passed. Why? Because we fooled the test. He found he found a hole in the in the test. Oh my god. You know what, man? You know, I am very lucky to find you. <laughs> I want you to know that. Right? So, so you see, now if we add the the assertion that Chris was talking about, which is lab view dependency exception. Lab view dependency exception, which is actual lab view dependency exception. Now, if I go here and say actual lab view, you see, said same exception as expected lab view exception. Now this test will fail. Why is that? Because because Chris is smart. That's why. <laughs> A lot of code drops there now. <laughs> a lot of code drops. It'll just ripple. You know why? You know, you know. I was just talking to my team about this the other day. I was saying I'm I'm favoring redundancy for the sake of building that muscle memory for engineers, right? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna do it like 20 times. Now it's stuck in there. It's like out of the box free training that people are getting. You know, to always remember to do that particular particular piece. Wait, did this thing pass? Hold on. Lab view expected. Wait, why did it pass? Let's see. I think we found a bug in a bug. <laughs> <laughs> let me run all the let me run all the tests. Sometimes, sometimes the system is a little trippy. Let's see. It's got to fail. Whoa, Chris, what happened? So this is the actual exception that's coming out from here, and we're comparing it to expected. Is it be oh because we mapped it to exception, but it didn't compare the message though. The message is very different, right? Yeah. Unless I'm missing something. Let's see. Try catch dependency. Throw a new lab with new exception. It didn't work. I don't think it worked. What do you think about that? So if, let's see. So if I, oh, you know what the problem is? It's actually, I know what the problem is. The test is bad. I'll tell you why the test is bad. <laughs> I'll tell you why the test is bad. Because in here, when we threw the exception, we didn't actually, the inner exception didn't have any message in it. Ideally, you're supposed to go here and say some message, random message. Oh, uh, yeah. Get random string. Yeah. No, your your code is fine, brother. You know, <laughs> so if I put this here like this, I bet you that test will fail. Because, but you know, this just sparks another problem because we have to map it to an exception because the inner exception of any exception that's coming in is of type exception with the E. Mm. We need to override that property, basically. We need to go and say that property is incorrect, right? Why did it still pass? Let's see. So this is inner exception with the message. Let's see. Run. You you guys are going for coffee without me? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Love my team. Best team ever made. Okay. So let's see why is this guy still happy. Um. So actual lab view. That guy shouldn't be happy. Let's put a breakpoint and figure it out. See, Chris, our discussions always get very interesting. <laughs> yeah. This is this is it. There's no. There's no fake nonsense. This is real life. This is the real deal. No nonsense policy. Let's see. Mm. So the actual dependency exception that's coming from here. 
Visual Studio Froze. Evaluating expression. What is this? 1995. Come on, man. There you go. So. So this guy is saying, unfortunately, StreamYard is not showing you the pop-up, so I'm going to have to do it this way. So what is in the inner exception of this guy? It has a message, exception of type, exception was thrown. We might be actually missing the entire... No, this is the actual exception, right? So the expected exception should be should be the one with the message. Yeah, there it is. So your expected exception, the inner exception has that weird message in it, right? So now that same exception as is picking up actual lab view exception, which doesn't have that message. Yep, it doesn't. And this guy does. And do, do you know why this is failing? Chris, this is not failing, Chris, because we need to say this should be true. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Now it's going to fail. Hopefully we'll see. <laughs> you know, the one concern that I have, though, is that our mapping to exception with the X is making us lose the type, my friend, which is not a good thing. There you go. That guy is failing now, right? This is why I wanted it to be should be equivalent to, so it would do that little stuff for us. Maybe we should just we should just add another function, extension function, Chris. You know, maybe that will work. The the one concern that I have is that it will it will do a ambiguity between fluent assertions and the actual you know and and our function so just just for the people watching here's one more round if i go back here this is this is how meticulous chris is that's that's the the beauty of his code if you go back into here and if i go and say no actually throw the actual exception with the with everything in it and i run this guy fireworks let's go Let's go. There it is. Right? <laughs> I think we have a couple of things to do. <laughs> Let me so just like just like, you know, you know, mature, you know, engineers should, you know, we will go back to our um our repo and just take some notes. What do you think about that? exception there we go and uh, issues foundations introduce should be equivalent I never get that correct somehow just introduce it somehow I don't know how you know, so that's one. And then another one, uh, foundations, remove, um, change the inner exception type of exceptions from exceptions to exception. And this one is tricky because sometimes the exception type that's inheriting with the X may or may not have an inner exception that's with the X, but we don't want to lose the type. Like the problem with this guy is that we we lose the type immediately, right? And it becomes problematic. What do you think, my friend? You know, see, a little session like this is a wild ride. You never know. You know, I learned something from you today. You know, I learned a lot actually. You know, I think we need to tighten up our our tests with what we have today a little bit. You know, just to make sure that. Um, that we're not, I can't believe, dude, you found this, you found this ga you know, uh, gap in our, in our tests. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. This is how the, this is how the standard grows. <laughs> just for the people watching, it's not just coming from my head. Look at this guy sitting all the way, all the way over there. You know, Chris, you, you told me you're originally from South Africa, right? But you're living in England, right? <laughs>
What happened to your voice? I lost you. Sound is gone. <laughs> Hello? Oh, now I can. Oh my god, have yeah. you been to have you been talking all this time and I haven't heard anything? <laughs> I don't know. I, I've got this clip here and uh, uh, <laughs> must have bumped on the seat. <laughs> my dear friend. So, uh, what so I think saying? the other issue we need to look, uh, add is, is, is the cleanup of the data equals. We wanted to do That's that. Right. That's right. That's true. Good catch. Let's go here. No issue. Go drop. Or wait, we need foundations report issues on data equal, right? Yeah. Equals and and clean it while you're at it. That's it. Have you ever seen anyone care about exceptions as much as we do? <laughs> They're important. This is how you know what your system is doing. In fact, actually, I think ignoring exception is the most arrogant thing an engineer could do. Because they think, oh, a problem will never happen to my system, so I shouldn't invest any time and effort whatsoever. You know, ah, exceptions. They're bad. <laughs> <laughs> my dear friend. Thank you so very much for your time and for your energy, for your brain power and all the stuff that you do, you know, to kind of push this whole community. So see your contributions are reaching everywhere. You know, as soon as we roll up a new version of exceptions, it just goes everywhere. I don't even know. You know, I just published it literally yesterday. Was it Chris it was yesterday yeah. night? And I don't know if, you know, sometimes NuGet takes a little bit of time to make things kind of catch up. But let's just go here and see. So exception with the X. Pretty cool name, huh? Yep, you already have 52 downloads since yesterday. Sure. Yeah. So I didn't I, I didn't know it. I, I didn't know it hit 23,000. To be honest with you, it's almost catching up to Restful Sense. You know, Restful Sense is the one that's exploding. 54,000 downloads. That's a pretty good deal, right? <laughs> yeah, nice library. I enjoy that one. It's a pretty good library. You know, we're gonna add. Uh, Hey, before we before we split, um, I was gonna ask you a question because I, I really trust your opinion. You know, should I add outside of the box for free caching in Restful Sense, or is that outside of the scope of this library? It could be a nice feature, right? Like you're you thinking could... about Redis or something like that. Yeah, you could you could use external caching or you could use in memory caching. If a certain app is bombarding an API, you could just flip up an option that says enable caching. So instead of like if you're hitting an API 20 times in one second, mm -hmm. you may as well just enable that feature so you don't destroy someone else's DDoS, someone else's API. Obviously, they they need to throttle, you know, from their side, but yeah. What do you think? Do you think that's worthy, or should this be an extension of Restful Sense? Like it's Restful Sense dot caching, and you you need to add that as another library that would allow you to have that capability. What do you think? Uh, about that? I think it it'll be good as extension library. Okay. Um, almost like uh, um, uh, what is it you did for um, I can't remember now. The, the, the... Is it exceptions for the identity? Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, Brian Parker, he did the uh, WebAssembly for Restful Sense. So there's Restful Sense and there's Restful Sense WebAssembly, you know, which basically allows Blazor applications. Uh, you haven't dabbled much with the UI yet, Chris, did you? No, I, I, I need to find time. We'll drag you there. <laughs> Let's drag you there. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to drag uh, Paul Wardy into it, you know. But he's he's still stuck in the. He he rearchitected and redesigned his entire backend system with the standard, all of it. Yeah. You know. I'm 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 I'm, I'm close behind him on, on my stuff. Um. <laughs> so I've not. I've I've I started quite heavily on on React. So I've not not moved to Blazor quite yet. Okay. But um. Whenever yeah, you decide very... to use a real UI framework, let me know. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely want to get get into that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but there's there's too too much to, to play with. It's a lot. Um, a so lot I've, going I've, on. <laughs> I've I've recently looked at the cul-de-sac pattern, enjoyed that quite a lot. Um, 
I'm, I'm busy rethinking how the security needs to work within the standard for the things I've got. Yeah. Um, I'll, ca I'll call the SAG. That's right. You know, there's uh, also people keep asking about, about security for call the SAG and, and, and standardized way of doing security. I'm exactly in the same boat where you are. You know, it's just prioritization. Like I'm trying to roll out tracing for people. It's going to blow your mind tracing. Yeah. Um, there's also rollbacks, you know, yeah. using rollbacks. So, you know, when you say try catch, I'll have it say try catch with rollback. So when an exception mm -hmm. happens, it just reverts the last action. And then yeah. some and think and then some crazy stuff about rollbacks in terms of uh, restful API communications and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, we'll see what we'll see how that goes. But uh, hey, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you, brother. You know, I have to jump into my next meeting, but uh, Let's do this again, yeah, please. Definitely. Thanks, Hassan. Okay. Thank you so much, Chris. <laughs> Take care. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>